Today is International Anti-Corruption Day. The United Nations General Assembly on October 31st, 2003, adopted the United Nations Convention Against Corruption and designated December 9th to mark the Anti-Corruption Day. This convention came into force in the year 2005, and since then, the day is being observed annually. On this International Day, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres asked that people continue to work on innovative solutions to win the battle against corruption. Joining us to discuss more on the significance of today is Edwin Ikwara, the director of One Campaign Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, my first question to you is, why MAC Anti-Corruption Day? Because, you know, people often think that corruption is just a way of life. I think the thing is that no matter what we think, uh, there's always a time to raise awareness. Um, because no matter what we do, if people perceive corruption to be a way of life, we have to get a time together where we raise the the, the issues that corruption has, uh, the, the effect of corruption, the impact of corruption, how institutions are undervalued by corruption, how investments are broken down because of corruption. So International Anti-Corruption Day is a day to really raise the awareness to the point where citizens can begin to understand the impact that it has on their lives, you know, wherever they are. Okay, according to in Transparency International, Nigeria ranks 27 out of 100 in the Corruption Perceptions Index of 2018. As with some other African countries, Somalia is said to be the most perceived corrupt country in the world, ranking 10 out of 100 since 2017. Why is this so with African countries? I think just to correct that, it is not a rank, it is a score. Scored, uh, Nigeria scores 24 out of 100 in the Corruption Perception Index. And um, Somalia, unfortunately, scores 10 out of um, 100 in the Corruption Perception Index. But in terms of the rank, uh, you know, it's 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 way it's really worse. Generally, I think the biggest hurdle to corruption is really on reliable institutions. Because where citizens have no recourse to institutions that they can trust, where they can go and get justice, where they know that if I if if we go through the right means, we will get service, and there's no way to to get service without you know bribing somebody, and that's where the biggest issue is. It is remember it's a corruption perception index, and so it is the way the citizens perceive their own uh, government, perceive their services that they are receiving. It is the way they they feel that services um, you know is coming to them. So those kind of commitments, uh, for instance, in Nigeria, there have been several commitments. But the question is that if you meet a man on the street today, does he believe that he can travel from Niger from Lagos to Abuja without, you know, being harassed by the police, without him being um, people asking him to pay a bribe? That is what drives the perception of, of, of corruption, you know, um, in Africa. And so it is mainly around the level of institutions. How functional are our institutions? How trustworthy are our institutions? How trustworthy are the courts? How sure are you that if you go to the police, you will get justice? Those are the things that drive, uh, you know, the corruption perception index. And that is why we still, Africa generally, African countries generally, still rank very, very low on the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. Yes, my next question is actually about the citizens. Most people feel, you know, in Africa, fighting corruption is a lost battle. How can they be encouraged and, you know, be optimistic? And what can African countries do to actually change the perception? Okay, I think there are many things that African countries do. I can tell you right, right now, we are even working with um, um, artists and talents. If people sing about the impact of corruption, if people can connect, um, you know, corruption to the kind of issues that they are dealing with, if people can see that corruption is not just about uh, some people in government, but it also connects them, and that a corrupt society will not allow them to get the services that they need, there's no way they will they will not want to get or be part of that. And that is why reason optimism means that when we all come together and know that the office of the citizen is the highest office of the land and that we have a right to demand accountability, when our musicians sing about it, when our um, families or our, our parents talk about it, when our schools teach about it, these are the things that we can all do together that for us to know that it is a, a battle that we can win. But until we all put our hands together, you know, until we all come together to say it is time for it to stop, you know, we will continue to think it's a way of life or that it's a lost battle. But I don't believe so. And that is why, for instance, we are launching a, on today, International Anti-Corruption Day, we are launching the Accountability Music Awards because we are trying to celebrate musicians who are singing about corruption, who are 
raising awareness on the issue, on the impact of corruption, and demanding accountability from the governments that are, you know, that are governing us. So we, it's, it, it's something that we all have to put our hands together to do. Otherwise, um, we, know, we just continue to perceive that it's a lost battle. Wow, thank you very much. Director of One Campaign Africa, Edwin Ikuora, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me.